So that's my homology and the structure reasoning. Here we go. Our definition mathematical models. Okay, these are graphs or pictures of situations, or like when you write out an equation, which we've already done. That's an example of a mathematical model that describes something. Okay, you'll uh, see how we use the mathematical models to solve a problem here in a second. Okay, question. This one now, I think the the work of what we use, what we use now for this type of mathematical models modeling, I think, was what we did yesterday. So here are some examples of some mathematical models. Point non explained triangle, polygon, diagonal, etc. Okay, we're going to use some points in line segments here in a second. So just drop down a few of some examples of some mathematical models that are physical objects. So we're going to use that to do this problem here. And the problem that we're going to do here in a second, okay, is going to be a problem like that on your homework and on your quiz tomorrow. So sometimes they're a little challenging, but I'm going to show you how to do it. And if you can attack the problem that way or approach the problem that way, you should be able to get it right. Okay? With the help of your calculator also. Now I use that. Okay, did everybody drop down a few of these? Okay, let's do this problem here. Okay, it's called an investigation with uh, the handshake. So I'll just read it to you real quick. It's from the book. It says, uh, party handshakes. Each of the 30 people at this party shook hands with everybody. Okay? They shook hands with everybody. How many handshakes were there all together? Okay, so if there's 30 people at a party, then everybody shook hands with everybody. How many handshakes were there? If you had to take a quick guess, what do you think? Work out 
and that gives you the table. You can see the table right there. So you can scroll down all the way to 30, second graph, second, and then the top button on the right. How many is it? 435. I don't think I heard that just earlier. 700. You just get Okay, now I said for 500 also, right? You're not going to see value You're going to pick up the whole time. You're not going to pick your best. You're going to miss a lot of them. So, because I'm going to give you one of these tomorrow. I'm give you a really, really high number. Okay? Now, it takes forever to scroll down. Do you know how to get the table to start it at 500? This is what you do. You press second window. Windows up at the top. The second button from the left. See where it says table start? All you have to punch in is 500. So right five, left click 500. Now press second table. So how many times shakes up and add? A party of 500 people. Okay, so I shall get some on the calculator. Be able to use this tomorrow, okay? I'll show yesterday after school if I can. Okay, so I'm
these are all threes, which is less than that. These are all fours. Okay? So all of these numbers that represent the handshake for each person is one less, right? So how would you represent that in minus one? Very good. Now, we need to do something to this. What did we just say that number was? It was doubled, right? So what do we do to that to get the correct answer? So half it. So you take half of that. So that right there is our equation. Okay, so that's talking it out using the mathematical model. So if you didn't have a calculator, you would have to do it this way. By the way, it doesn't look like the one you equate in your calculator because it is in a factor form. So what's one half in times one times in?
and every step of the way, we have proof that this is our answer. Okay? So let's practice using um, deductive reasoning to solve this equation. Okay? Because you're going to have this on your quiz tomorrow, and you're going to have it on your assignment in a little bit. So here's how you do this. When we solve this problem, we have to provide a reason for everything we write. Okay? So, like, what would be one of the reasons on why you write the next line? What would the next line be? <laughs> Distributing. That would be a reason. Because everybody's going to get rid of the parentheses first. If not, I know some people might get rid of the 16, but let's do distribute. So, I would write 10x minus 24 plus 16 equals 4x plus 2. And so, right there, we would say distributed property. Yes, you can just write this. Okay, but that's our reason on why we're able to write the next line. Okay, this is like a proof. Next one, what, what, what do you all know the next? What, what is that? Combine <laughs> like chart. Okay, so then you could say 10x minus. Equals 4x plus 2. Okay, if you wrote simplify, that would be okay. I'm going to write combine like that. Okay, because we're adding those two together. Okay, what would be the next step? Get rid of the what? The negative. Add a side. So then I got 10x equals 4x plus 10. That would be addition property. Because all I did, all I did was add to both sides. Then what? Subtract 10. Very good. Subtract 4x. So then I got 6x equals 10. And then that one is the subtraction property. So all I did was subtract from both sides. So what's the last step? Divide by 6. So x equals 5 thirds, right? Are we doing this one already? And to get that last line, it's the division property because all I did was divide by 6 from both sides. So this is like a proof. These are all your statements. These are all your reasons. And we have proof every step of the way why x is equal to 5 thirds. Okay? So I don't want to think about your homework if you don't feel free.